Okay, in today's lesson, we're going to be looking at how to multiply polynomials. To start out with, you don't have to write down what's in this box about the extended distributive property. Obviously, you're welcome to, but that's just explaining what I'm illustrating here in this first example. The extended distributive property just means that if I have two uh, polynomials being multiplied by each, by, by each other, we take each term from one, one polynomial and multiply it times each of the terms in the other polynomial. So if you notice here with the 2x cubed, we're multiplying that times the 5x squared and the 4. Then we take the 3x squared, multiply that times the 5x squared, and then times the 4. And finally, we would take that's a negative 2 times the 5x squared and times the 4. Doing so results in these products, and then you'd look to see if there's any like terms, and you'd add them together. So what's circled there is your final answer. Now that's using what I call the extended distributive property. Now that can be kind of unorganized, and there's a lot of... Um, room to make mistakes with forgetting to add numbers together or not quite multiplying, multiplying right. So that's why I like using this other method which is just what I call the box method of multiplying. So we're going to set up, so I set up the 5x squ uh, squared plus 4 on one side and the 2x cubed plus 3x squared minus 2 on the other side. You could have these switched around and it, you'd end up with the same answer. But when we multiply these, 5 times 2 is 10. x squared times x cubed would be x to the fifth. 5x squared times 3x squared would be a positive 15x, and it would be to the fourth power. Remember, when you're multiplying the bases of the same, what we're doing is we're adding the exponents. And so 5x squared times negative 2 would be negative 10x squared. Do this with the 4 now. 4 times 2x cubed would be 8x cubed. 4 times a 3x squared, well, that's going to be 12x squared. And 4 times negative 2 is negative 8. So now the next step is to add together our like terms and write this in standard form. So our answer would be, there's no other x to the fifth, so it stays a 10x to the fifth. There's no other x to the fourth, so it stays a 15x to the fourth. Now my x cubes, I have to go down here to get an x cube. There's no other x cubes, though. My squareds are diagonally across from each other. And that's usually, if there's going to be a like term, that's going to be where they're at. It's so close together like that. They're going to be diagonally across from each other, usually. And 12x squared minus 10x squared would be a 2x squared. And we have the minus 8. And if you notice, these are the same answers, but the one on the right is a little bit more organized, and you'll see what I mean as you have to do these on your own. Speaking of doing one on your own, why don't you give this one a shot? So why don't you try multiplying these two polynomials together? It won't hurt my feelings. If you don't use the box method, you could use the traditional method. There's nothing wrong with that. But why don't you pause the video and hit play when you're ready to check to see if you've got the right answer. So let's see how you did here. So there's a couple ways you could have set this up. Okay, so when you multiply these together, x times 5x squared would be 5x cubed. x times negative 4x would be negative 4x squared. And x times 3 would be a positive 3x. Negative 7 times 5x squared would be negative 35x squared. A negative times negative is a positive, so this is going to be 28x. And a negative 7 times 3 would be negative 21. And again, look at your like terms. They're diagonally across from each other. So it's important to look at. So now when you, oh, our answer here is going to be, there's only one x cubed there. It's a 5x cubed, so there's no other ones to add to it. But a negative 35x squared and a negative 4x squared, we add those together, so that's negative 39x squared. 28x plus 3x, that's positive 31x, and then minus 21. So you should have gotten that as your answer. I'm going to skip some of these other examples. And we're going to move to this one here. It says a rectangular piece of cardboard measuring 16 inches by 20 inches to be folded up. I fold it up into an open box after cutting squares of side length x from each corner. Let v of x be the volume of the box. So here's what we have. We have this original piece of cardboard that's 20 inches by 16 inches. And we're cutting out a corner from each, or a square corner from each side. And so those square corners, obviously, if they're square, they're going to have the same length on all four sides. And we want to come up with an equation for the volume of this box after it's all folded up. Well, the dimensions of the, remember to find the volume, we're going to take the length times the width times the height. 
Now I need to do some visual uh, thinking here. Think about this. If I were to take and remove each of these corners and then fold up these sides, the sides that get folded up, when those get folded up, that's going to be the height of our box. So the height of our box is just going to be x. And if you think about it, if I remove those four corners and fold up the sides, the length here is not going to be 20 inches anymore. It's going to be 20 inches, but we're losing this length, which is x, and this length, which is x. So we're losing 2x, so it's going to be 20 minus 2x. The width of the box is not going to be 16. It would have been 16, but then we're taking away this x and this x. So the width of the box would be 16 minus 2x. Oops. Would be the width. So to find the volume, we're going to take and multiply these together. So we'll write it as x times 16 minus 2x times 20 minus 2x. Now here's a note about multiplying. When we have three terms, we only multiply one term times another. In other words, what I mean by that is, I, if I distribute this x through, I do not multiply it times these two. Those would be, that would be wrong. We don't want to do that. The only things that we multiply it by are the set of parentheses that are immediately next to it. So as soon as you get to the second set of parentheses, that's a stop, it's like a stop sign. You want to be done with that term now. Not multiply it times the 20 and the negative 2x. So if I multiply this together, I would have 16x minus 2x squared. But the problem is I still have to take that term, or those terms, times the 20, whoops, times the 20 minus 2x. So this would be where if you wanted to, you could use that x box method. But here I have two terms times another two terms. So it'll be, it doesn't matter where you put them. Put them on one side or the other. So now when you multiply these together, well, 20 times 16 would be 320x. 20 times negative 2 is a negative 40x. Oops, I forgot x squared. Got my square in here. So it's going to be 20 times 16x is 320x. 20, 20 times negative 2x squared is negative 40x squared. I'm going to go to the bottom row. Negative 2x times 16x would be negative 32x squared. And a negative 2x times a negative 2x cubed, uh, negative 2x squared would be a positive 4x cubed. So you want to put this in standard form. So we're going to start out with the 4x cubed. Next, we go to our x squareds. If you notice, again, those are diagonally across from each other. So we get negative, when we add negative 32x squared plus a negative 40x squared, we get negative 72x squared. And our last term would be 320x. Now we want to figure out how to graph this, how, do we, how we could use our graphing calculator to find the maximum possible volume. So if you have a graphing calculator, why don't you get that out, and we're going to graph this. So let's first let's go to a graphing menu, a graphing page, I should say. So we're going to graph. Oops, close out of that. We're going to graph. It was 4x cubed. Now make sure that when you do the cube, like we've mentioned before, that you move the cursor back down to the bottom there. So it's 4x cubed. And then it was going to be minus 72x squared plus 320x. So minus 72x squared plus 320x. So when you hit enter, you're going to get a really weird looking graph. So now we want to figure out what would the maximum value be for this equation. Because remember this equation, let's think back to what we're talking about here. X represents the, uh, remember we're going to cut out square, um, we're going to cut out square pieces from each side, each corner of this piece of cardboard. 
Well, what x would represent is the length of that square, each side length of that square. And we're trying to figure out what the, how to maximize our volume, what the, vo what the largest volume would be. Because if I take and use an x that's too small, I'm going to have a really shallow box, so I'm going to have a small volume. If I use a value for x that's too large, I'll have a taller box, but it'll be really narrow. So then I'll still be, not be maximizing my volume. I want to figure out what value for x would give me the most volume out of this box. So if we look back at our graph, here's how we're going to do that. Go to Menu, under Analyze Graph, we have an option called the Maximum. Now if you notice, right now my graph is blinking. Yours might be doing the same. But down here it says Lower Bound. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put my finger somewhere on this line. Because I know it's somewhere between these two blinking lines that are blinking in red here. So we're somewhere in between there, it's going to be my maximum value. So I'm going to put my... Um, and click enter when I put my finger on one of those lines or near one of those lines. It doesn't have to be right on it. But Now if I move my cursor to the right, or notice how it says um, now we're, it's changed from being lower bound to now being upper bound. So I'll move this to the right. It'll be about where that other line is or it doesn't matter where, but somewhere around that other line. And then hit enter again. And if you notice what it's done here is it's found our answer. So our answer is that the maximum value for x would be at 2.94. Now what the y represents is the maximum volume. So if I were to cut out from each corner squares that were 2.94 inches on each side, the volume of the, ba of the box would be about 420 cubic centimeters. So with that, I will stop with this video. So hopefully you understand how to uh, multiply two polynomials and you can see how we use it. Um, and good luck on your assignment.